All right, guys, hope you all had a great new year. You're doing good, and of course, you're keeping well. Why is it that work today was just absolutely brutal? <laughs> uh, start of a new year, Monday, it's just the worst thing ever. Oh, I actually almost fell asleep at my desk, which is uh, not great. But, you know, as with every new year as well, I've got some goals that I want to achieve. Lose weight, eat healthier, get more sleep, that sort of thing. Uh, I'm determined to see that through until at least next week, where I'm sure I will fall flat on my face. But anyway, today, guys, I wanted to talk about uh, year three. Actually, I just want to talk about changes and additions that I think is needed for year three. So I posted on Twitter asking what changes and or additions did players want to see in the Division 2, either for title update 12.1 or year three. And this is because if there is a year three, I really think there's some things the devs could do, not including content, of course, which is necessary, uh, which could make our experiences within the game better. And today I wanted to push those things to the front. Now, some of these I may have covered before, some I may not have, and it's likely I will do multiple videos on this. So before we begin, drop a like and subscribe to keep up to date with all of the videos. Follow me on Twitter as well, guys. I'm pretty active there. And um, with that said, let's begin. Title update 12.1 is scheduled to release on February 2nd, so less than a month away. And what we know so far is the codename Nightmare event, apparel event, is coming with that update, although it's uh, been changed. No longer are we getting Kenley College. Along with that, we're getting 60 FPS and 4K uh, being unlocked on the next-gen consoles. And we've also got changes coming to the optimization cost to make it easier to actually use the optimization station. Now, for some people, that might not come as good news because I've seen some of you guys who have just got way too much free time, uh, who put in crazy amounts of time and, and, and resources and have a ridiculous amount of materials, which really just trivializes the gear game for you. But for most people, I would say 99% of the community, changes to the optimization station will be welcome. Now, whilst I don't expect that much more from title update 12.1, as it's only a small update, if we are getting a year three or title update 13, then I do expect to see some real big changes and additions added to the game, even if we don't get any more content, which is becoming increasingly more likely the more I look into what's going on surrounding the game, and that's something I'm going to cover in a future video. So content, that's a given, right? Everyone wants that. But today I wanted to focus on other things that I really think could make it uh, the experience for us more enjoyable, especially now that Golden Gun is over. I'm genuinely gutted that's gone, to be honest. I feel so much weaker in the game now, and that's not something I enjoy. All right, so leave your own suggestions in the comments or tweet them at Epic Slayers, and let's go from the top of my list. Now, for number one, the first thing that I noted when thinking about this video topic was bloat. I just put the word bloat. Why? Well, there's many things in this game that just kind of act as filler. It just bloats the game, but it adds no meaningful impact on our experience. It just It's just there for the sake of being there. Now, I know I'm repeating myself, but let's just take the vast amount of talents, whether it be on weapons or gear, that's not really ever being used because they are simply awful. And that's not in comparison to other talents either. They're just awful on their own as talents. You know, we've got... Mad Bomber, Overclock, Reassigned, First Blood, Tamper Proof, Protected L Reload, Leadership, Energize, Explosive Delivery. You know, these are just the backpack and chest talents that I can think of that are pretty useless in the game. And, and this doesn't include weapon talents uh, as well. And I, I, I think there's some weapon talents that are pretty useless. So, uh, you know, there is a lot of talents here that just need to be looked at. Now, the last thing I want is the devs to remove talents from the game because... I'm always going to want more build diversity, but in their current state, the talents that I've just named above, Mad Bomber, etc., if those were to be removed, I really don't think people would care all that much. In fact, I know most people would be happy with that change because, like me, they agree this is just bloat, it's just filler. These talents just decrease the chance of players getting the actual talents they want to use, and they decrease it by a lot. If you think about it, I've just named nine gear talents that, if removed, wouldn't show up in the loot pool again. That's a significant amount. And this means that every drop you get would be a talent that could be useful, which is what I think everybody wants. Now, who's picking up a chess piece with Mad Bomber and stashing that away for a rainy day? Not me. And I'm willing to put 100 on there being 0.01% of people that do because they're hoarders or because 
maybe they think the devs might do something about it in the future. So the devs, uh, they need to make a decision. Either they remove these talents or what I'd want is for these to be reworked or buffed to make them a viable choice. Mad Bomber, for example, that talent for me has to be reworked. There's no buff that's going to make that talent ever a viable option. It just needs to be changed. And I'd rather have 30 viable talents than 21 options because ultimately that means we have more build diversity and that's a good thing. Sure, it means that RNG will remain as is, but if the devs could create a world where all the talents are worthy of being used in some sort of decent build, well, that's the world I and I'm sure most of you want. With that said, I'm not naive. I know the devs are never going to be able to create a world where every talent is viable and that every time you pick up a piece of gear, you are looking at the talent and thinking to yourself, right, I can make a build out of this. That's just never going to happen. It never does happen in looter shooters. You always have metas, that sort of thing. But that said, I would say that 25%, 30% of talents on gear, and that includes weapons as well, is probably useless at this point. It might even be higher than that. So if we can get that down to, say, 5%, then that would be better. The, close, the closer to zero we can get, the better. And I think the devs need to look at that. Now, there are, of course, other things in the game that could be included under the label of bloat. And I could make a whole video or more on those as well. So instead, I just wanted to name a few in this one here. So there's some weapon talents that have no place on certain weapons, i.e. Ranger on a shotgun. And there are some talents that straight up shouldn't be on some weapons. Again, to me, it's just there to be there for no real reason. It just increases RNG and ultimately it's frustrating. And I think then that just needs to be changed. The same applies for mods. There are way too many variations that just don't need to be there. And again, it's just creating bloat, i.e. stinger charges and repair charges. Can we just have charges and that's it? Remove the bloat. It's pretty simple. And also there are weapons that are simply useless. And again, I think they just add bloat to the game. They're either, they either need to be buffed or they need to be removed, i.e. the Thompson. Um, it's just one off the top of my head. Underpowered with less mod slots and other weapons. It's useless. And that's not to say that people don't use it. Because I know people use like the Thompson, for example. But it's useless. Absolutely useless. And I'm not saying just remove everything for... Because, because there are stuff in the game that doesn't need to be useful. That's still fun to use. And there are still stuff in the game that's for that. But for the most part, a lot of this stuff for most players just adds blow. If you've got 100 players and one person likes a Thompson, but that means that the other 99 people have a chance of that Thompson dropping on uh, the ground that increases their chance of getting the, the stuff they want, then I think you have to look towards the 99 players and appease those than that 1%. So just remove the Thompson, is what I'm trying to say. Now these are a few of the things adding bloke to the game, which I think needs to be either reworked, buffed, or just needs to be removed in year three. For number two, and again, I'm going to be repeating myself here, and that should tell you something. The devs need to listen. NPC damage needs to be looked at again, and also armor and health mods. So originally, I noted on my list that armor and health need to be buffed. And whilst I still think this may be true, I actually think it's NPC damage that's the main problem. And I say that because elite NPC damage, for me, is actually okay for the most part. When I'm playing on Heroic with my skill DPS build, I can take a couple of hits before needing to take cover and medkit, which feels it feels about right to me. Now, that's not to say there aren't occasions where it feels like I'm almost getting one shot, because that's true. But for the most part, I can take a couple and I'm good. Now, I'd say from my experience, elite NPC damage is okay on Heroic difficulty. Anything below that, I don't know, to be honest, guys. I'm purely speaking from my experience with Heroic content. So with that in mind, if the devs were to, say, double armor in the game, as I've seen people suggest, I actually think I would be too tanky for heroic content, considering all of my attributes are invested in skills and TPS. Again, though, if I invest in armor right now on heroic content, I do still feel pretty squishy, to be honest, unless I've got a shield. So that's why I said there might need to be a slight buff to armor. What I, what I think is, and has been for the longest time, the biggest issue is red bar and veteran damage plus accuracy. This is where the devs have to make changes as soon as possible. I should not be getting down from a red bar with 8 bullets. And the same with veteran NPCs. And again guys, if you disagree, let me know in the comments down below. I'm, I'm not sure what the solution is, to be honest. Now, if I had the ability to make changes right now, what I would do is I would reduce the red bar damage significantly. 
I would reduce the veteran damage as well, and I would probably make some changes to accuracy. I also think that fire rate on NPCs is sometimes too much. Sometimes I feel like I'm being shredded in seconds simply because NPCs are too accurate and they fire, they hit you with so many bullets so quickly. So that may also be something I'd look into. And I would probably leave the armor value per gear at 170k, but instead I'd have a system where each blue attribute adds some sort of damage mitigation which scales exponentially with the amount of blue cores you have on. So let's say you've got two pieces, that would give you an additional 10% damage mitigation. Three pieces, 15%. And that way, if you actually build into blues, then it does feel rewarding. But also if you don't, and you've got a build like mine where I don't have any blues, I'm not, I'm not actually gaining anything from those changes. Now I'm not sure if this would work. It's an idea that I had, and I'm including it in this video. And I want you guys to let me know what you think about that. For number three, I'm going to keep this short and sweet. PvP, I think it does need some, some real resources put in there to make it a viable experience. Now, there will be some people out there who play PvP a lot in this game and probably enjoy it. But I'd say, for the most part, people who used to play PvP in The Division do not play PvP in The Division 2. And that's just because it's not an enjoyable experience for the most part like i said that's not for everyone but i say for the majority that is the way that's certainly how i feel now i do play pvp in other games i play pvp in destiny i play pvp in battlefield and stuff like that and i enjoy those experiences with that said i've had the urge recently to come back and play pvp in the division not the division 2 but in the division and that's because the division for me the first division with pvp was where i spent most of my time in the game and yes, it was broken, and there was stuff that was wrong with it, for sure. But it was fun. What The Division 2 has a problem with is that not only is it broken a lot of the time, it's just not an enjoyable experience at all. And so I would love the devs to take some time and invest some resources into PvP for this game. I also think that the PvP community deserve it. It's been nearly two years, and really nothing's changed in PvP uh, that be either be the conflict or the dark zone. Now I'm not expecting anything big from the devs. In fact, I'm not expecting anything at all from the devs in terms of PvP. There's going to be no new content for PvP. Uh, I did talk about maybe a new dark zone coming, but that's not going to be here in this game. I, I'm sure about that because I'm pretty sure the devs are actually working on a new game, a new division. Whether that be the devs uh, that are currently working on this, like Massive, or maybe someone else, and that's. So I'm going to talk about in another video where I have evidence about that, possibly. So stay tuned for that. But it would be nice if the devs could put some effort into PvP and at least make it uh, an experience that a lot of players would be happy to come back with and actually play. I would love to play PvP in the Division 2. It's not going to happen, but if I include it here in this video... At least I can say I tried. But that's it, guys. Thank you very much for watching today's video. As I said earlier, I do have some speculation slash evidence about possibly a new studio working on the next Division game, sort of. And I'm going to be putting that out in a video in the near future. I'm just gathering all the evidence I can at the moment. I've got quite a bit at the moment, but I want to make it enough to actually put it into a video. So stay tuned for that. Make sure you've got notifications turned on so that you don't miss that video. With that said, State of the Game will likely come back next week, which I'm going to cover. And of course, I'm going to be doing more videos about Year 3 and, and what stuff to expect. I also want to talk about Golden Gun, the global event, which I think actually was a great thing for this game, but it kind of isn't, because now I feel so weak and I wish I had Golden Gun back. So, yeah. That's it, guys. Thanks very much for watching. Until the next one, Epic out.